Today I'm chatting with June and we are talking about scams that she has encountered all over the world. This woman is very well traveled, originally from Singapore, now living here in Thailand, but she's traveled extensively and as any traveler knows, sometimes, you know, you get told stories, things happen, it's not always on the up and up. So, tell me about this. What was the first kind of the travel scam you want to tell me about? Um, okay, so... Uh, my first thoughts on this um, is that normally when you go to a place that's saturated with tourism, yeah. especially if it's a country that's you know economically not as well off, you almost get this mentality in the local populace where they think that the tourist is fair game and it's yeah. completely okay to rip them off. It's very um, true. Completely okay to you know take money off them, whatever means is possible. So there's this kind of a, you know mentality, and I think that uh, I strongly encountered this when I was in Morocco. Okay. Yeah, I landed in Marrakesh. So the first thing I needed was to get a taxi from the airport. Sounds simple enough. Um, but of course, you know, first you had to haggle on the price, and then he had to haggle on the exchange rate, and then uh, afterwards he took my money. Um, then when he drove me. Um, he drove me to the beginning of a very narrow little street oh that basically does not admit a vehicle. Oh. And he says, your hotel is in there. And I got out, I gave him the money and he drove away. And when I went into that little street, my hotel was not in there. Not so, at all? Not at all. So essentially, oh he simply gosh. just found the most convenient place to drop me off and that was it. So I spent an hour lugging my suitcase around oh the streets of Marrakesh, trying to find my hotel. That's just rude. Yeah, and being catcalled all the time and worried that, you know, I had men coming to try and take my suitcase away from me. What time of day was it? Uh, it was in the afternoon, okay. bright bright daylight. Okay. And, and they, they wanted to make some extra money being a porter, but they were quite aggressive. They would, like insist on taking your suitcase away from you. So I had to get pretty aggressive to like retain my suitcase. Wow. Yeah, so it but really wasn't fun. I love that you were strong though, because I think that a lot of people would go there and if someone's kind of like persisting trying to take that suitcase, I think a lot of people would just let them take the suitcase. No, I didn't want because I had no idea whether they were going to take it and run or if they were really sincere about their offer of porterage. Right. And at that point, I was already having one negative experience behind me. I wasn't ready to face another one. And also then this boy started following me through the streets. And then I was frantic thinking, what should I do? I, in the end, I took out my camera, whipped around and tried to take his photo. And that was when he ran away. Oh, so that's good. I don't know that yeah. I would have thought of that. Yeah, so that's what I tried to do. Because I did read that the Moroccan police don't take kindly to the people harassing the people, okay. the, the, the tourists. Right. And therefore, you seem to still have a little bit of a chance if you, you know, make it look as if you're going to take their photo and possibly go Report to the police. Them. Right. Yeah, so that, wow. that was the really worst first day arrival ever in any place. <laughs> I spoke to another woman who was scammed in Morocco similarly, but they took her to an, a, the, the alleyway, but at least her hotel, her hostel was actually down the alley. Yours, they just dropped you off. Yeah. At so just some miscellaneous alley, hostel, hotel, yeah. nowhere to be found. Yeah. That's very rude. Yeah, so, yep, just just be aware. So, How did you find your um, hotel eventually? I, I would say that uh, what you should do is probably um, book a hotel whereby they can definitely give you a GPS location to where they are. Yeah. Because my hotel did not have a GPS location. They hadn't put themselves on the map. Okay. Uh, so if you can't find them, don't book them. That's a good point. Offline maps are super helpful when you're traveling. Maps Me or even Google Maps offline, if you download the area in advance, is amazing. Mm. But like she's saying, if your hotel or your hostel isn't on the map, then that's a worthless situation. So, so making the sure good thing is to write them ahead of time and insist that they send you a correct pin to their location. Yeah. Yeah. That would have helped so much. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and then this isn't the only one you face. This is just the Morocco yes, arrival. <laughs> yes. And then you go to a very ancient civilization, and I'm talking about Rome, and another dishonest taxi driver. Ah. So when you arrive at the Rome airport, they do have these very legitimate signs that tell you that any taxi trip into this 
uh, perimeter of the city, which is like, like you know, defined there, mm -hmm. is uh, 50 euros. That's a flat fee, 50, 50 euros, euros to go from the airport into the city of Rome. That's expensive. Then, Maybe I've been in Southeast Asia too long. Yeah, it is expensive. <laughs> but then uh, when we get there and you get into the taxi, then I picked up on this scam, which is that the taxi would driver will start to say to you, oh, you know, um, there is a, um, a very big traffic jam and it's going to take a really, really long time. Uh, is it okay if I just dropped you at this train station and then you take a train in and you'll be a lot quicker? But you still have to pay the 50 euros. Right. So then I kind of sensed something was wrong. And, and, and as we were discussing this with him, uh, we noticed that he switched off the taxi meter. Huh. And so I was like, what is going on, you know? And we had our two children with us, uh, me and my husband. I was trying to make sense of all of this, but we, we decided, okay, if it's going to take the train and it's not far from our hotel, we'll, we'll chance it. And, but the thing was, I realized that he hadn't taken us barely halfway there and uh, we shouldn't have to pay 50 euros. Right. You know, but my husband was too quick. He gave him the money and the guy just mm. took off. And so we didn't even have a chance to, you know, like address right. it. And later on, we also found out that he lied to us about how much the train tickets would cost. And so, you know, when he lied to us about how much the train tickets would cost, it made it look like it would be viable to just do that, but it wasn't. So we ended up spending more like 75 euros getting to a hotel. Wow. Yeah, so that it was really dishonest of them. Yeah. Yeah, it's tricky because it's tough when you're traveling to sometimes know who you can trust and who you can't trust. Because I've encountered, of course, cab drivers in India who are telling me, you know, oh, you know, you can't take a cab, but it's going to, or, you know, you have to take a cab because if you take the train, it's going to be so complicated and it's not. But then I've also had situations where I'm traveling where people are really helpful and honest also with cab drivers, you know, so it's like, it's tough yeah, to that, know. There's, there's always the, the good and bad of everything. I mean, there'll always be a few bad apples in the barrel. So sometimes it's a matter of luck, but sometimes if you just pay attention to intuition, you know something is wrong. And yeah. when I was in Rome, my intuition was telling something was wrong, but it was just that I didn't have enough chance to warn my husband about it because we couldn't quite speak openly in front of the taxi driver and say, I yeah. think this guy's trying to scam us. And so it was just, you know, uh, very unfortunate. But ultimately, I think your intuition will tell you. But yeah, still, it, it is difficult sometimes because we want to you know, believe in the good of people, you know? Yeah. So, yeah. But I think you're right. That is a really important point, which is that intuition is strong. And I think you can usually feel it when you just kind of sense that something strange has happened. You sense that a person's not being completely candid with you, that maybe the story is a little bit shaky. It's especially important for women to have their intuition switched on when they are solo travelers. Yeah. And this has helped me a lot. Mm. Yeah, it has. I mean, this, this extends to more the topic of personal safety for women, but there are also scams that involve, you know, um, risk to women's personal safety. Sure. Yeah, you so. know, even, um, you know, and it's also a lot of these scams, they sort of play on you when you're confused and vulnerable, right? Precisely. It's a smart time It's because to get you are, you know, uh, unfamiliar with the area, you know, everything's strange, yeah. you know, everything's disorienting, and that's when you're most vulnerable. And they know how to read those signs because they are seasoned. Yeah about you know picking right. on the people who are most vulnerable yeah so yeah. even one time I, I remember i was in thailand actually i was in the south near like um surat thani whatever it doesn't matter but i was down in the south of thailand and i remember i was looking for a bus looking for a bus station and this guy was like oh follow me yeah yeah it's this way and he's like kind of beckoning me down an alley and like for a moment just a moment i almost took a step to move forward because i was like that doesn't make sense. You're like, what am I doing? Something kicked in and was like, no, this is weird, you know? And I didn't follow him down this road, but I think sometimes in the States, we're just trained or in, in our home country, we're not accustomed to having to be alert or to question things always. And uh, it's good to be alert when traveling. Well, normally if you're in a big city, uh, the, the, the trick would be to try and look more like a local. So you don't want to be like lugging big cameras, holding a map. You know, you know, all the signs that scream that you're unfamiliar with the area. Yeah. You want to be able to try and like, you know, look like one of the regular people going about their daily business and then it's a little bit less of a sticking out like a sore thumb. Right. And less of a target. Right. Yeah.
But sometimes, you know, we just stand out <laughs> because, well, you know, you look different. If I'm traveling around yeah, Thailand, in, yeah, in Thailand you look substantially different. But in a big yeah. city that's cosmopolitan and sure. now you can get away with it. Absolutely. Yeah, if it looks like yeah. Spain or Rome, even yeah. it's obviously multicultural places that you need to kind but of blend I, in. I remember when we were in Prague, my girlfriend took out like a sore time because we're both Chinese and we're in Prague. And we kind of split up to go do separate errands. And we said we would meet back at the ho hotel room where we were. And the funny thing was, we actually both encountered the same scam. Hmm. So what happened was, as I was you know, out running my errand, there was this man who looked like officially dressed up. And he came to me and then he said, you know, I'm a currency inspector. I need to check the money in your wallet and see if you're carrying any foreign currencies. And I was and he thinking, looked legit? I didn't think so. I just thought this is weird. And I was thinking like I'm a foreigner, of course I'm carrying foreign money. What does that yeah. mean? Yeah. He says, oh, you know, we have a currency law. You're not allowed to carry a certain amount of money that exceeds a certain amount. And I was thinking, this is the most extraordinary thing I've ever heard. And I really don't believe him. Yeah. But I was thinking, what if it is actually true and I right. get into trouble? Yeah, yeah. So You're in then, a foreign country. Yeah. So I thought about it for a while. Then I said to him, OK, fine. I'd be happy to let you count my money when we do it inside the police station. As soon as I said that, he turned around and he walked away. <laughs> so that was it. I knew that, you know, that was a scam. I love it. This is a seasoned traveler. She <laughs> thought about it. She was like, you can count my cash in the police station. Oh my God, I, I don't know that I would have thought of that on the spot. And then when I get back to the room, my girlfriend tells me that, hey, you know, I had to give my money to this guy to count. I was like, oh no, you oh, didn't. And she actually gave her money to Yeah, the but the thing was, they are actually very smart pickpockets. While counting the money, they took some. Yeah. So she ended up with less money in her wallet. Yeah. Yeah, it was a very, but at least they very didn't take it all. Maybe that's blatant. Polite. Yeah very very blatant uh, way to, to steal people's money it was incredible the the gall of the guy doing yeah. that you know so she lost some money and yeah I mean that's I don't know what to say but I, I generally are bold. just yeah that's actually fascinating that might be my favorite scam like you just ask someone to hand you their money and then you just like count count skim count count wow yeah it's crazy <laughs> money inspector all right so if you're in prague don't let anybody inspect your cash well, i'm hoping that that doesn't happen anymore because it did happen like maybe about 20 years ago oh wow okay so that's like an old school scam maybe they've like modernized it in some way or maybe it's still working maybe. i don't know no it's probably a lot quicker to just you know take people's phones when they're not paying attention so many people leave their phones yeah. on the table and it just gets lifted really quickly. But you know, even here in Chiang Mai, I hear about financial scams. So we're in Chiang Mai, Thailand right now, and uh, you hear about people getting scammed out of money. And it's always kind of confusing with how these scenarios play out. And it's never really clear to me how it happens, but I guess when people are vulnerable somehow, they wind up handing over well, some money. The one that I've heard was this guy who came up to this girl as she stepped away from an ATM machine. Right. And he had some kind of sub story for her about how he, had, you know, uh, lost all his money and he has to go to the embassy and he has no money on him. Right. And I think and he, I think this guy was supposed to be British or something, right? Yes. Apparently, he's supposed to be British. And I wasn't sure if he was like having a crutch or having his leg bandaged or whatever. Something like, I was just in an accident and I need to go to my embassy and blah, blah, blah. And I think she gave him like 10,000 baht. I mean, the poor girl, she's That's obviously like a, few a very kind girl, yeah. but still, you know, you, you don't give money away like that without taking some form of ID. Or you know? by the way, like if you want to be savvy, if someone comes up to you and they say, okay, I need money to get to my embassy or whatever, you could call them an Uber, call them a grab, you know, like it, you could just book a grab straight to the embassy, you yeah, know, yeah. if they really need it, that's a way to help. But you hear about these things. But the thing is, I think it's also important that when people do get scammed, right, that we're always compassionate towards people, right? Because ultimately what gets played on a lot of the times is our vulnerabilities. So our kindness, our compassion, our wanting to help other people, or just our confusion, you know, in certain situations. So I think when we hear about people who get scammed, 
I don't know. Because I think that girl, by the way, in particular, people were a little bit mean to her. And that's not right. Well, I do have a positive story to end it, if I may. Let's hear I it. I was traveling in Germany and I had one of those uh, sleeper berths, you know, like six berths in a carriage kind of situation. Okay. And I had just booked one berth, but the other five berths were taken up by German teenagers on their way to summer holidays. And, then, and this is on a train? Yeah, this is on a train. Okay. It was an overnight train. And the next morning when we woke up, this one guy was almost in tears. He said his money was gone. And, you know, at first thought, I just felt really bad for him. But then I realized that all the others were looking at me in a really strange way. Because mm. I was the only stranger in there. The right. others were all, you know, his schoolmates or, or friends they didn't seem and they didn't I, seem torn I just up. thought like this was really odd but you know I I was also feeling bad for the guy so I said hey you know um because it was the beginning of their vacation and he lost his money so I said look I'm happy to lend you a hundred Deutschmark you know this was a while back I can lend you a hundred Deutschmark but you'll have to pay me back and then I gave him my uh, boyfriend's account number I mean he was my boyfriend then he's my husband now so I gave his account number in Germany and then I just gave him the money. I wasn't sure I ever see the money again. But then eventually, when the summer was over, uh, he wrote back and he had put the money back in the account. Wow. So that was something. <laughs> That's impressive. I thought it was going to be like, oh, and then we never got the money back. But like I felt good because like they <laughs> were happy or something, you know. So I think he got home and he spoke to his dad and his dad put the money back. So, yeah. So maybe it was a scam, maybe it wasn't, but either way, you got the money back. Yeah, it wasn't a scam because, you know, he, he gave the money back. So I don't think it was a scam. He was genuinely, you know, upset by the loss. And I think it was probably one of his friends who stole his money. Oh, that's awkward. So, okay, that yeah. would explain why the friends then were kind of like... Yeah, I, I don't know what happened there. Anyways. But that is a good story because, you know, not all people are dishonest, right? Some people are actually in need. And we'll reimburse you. No, no. But chances are they won't, so don't give them your money. (laughs) (laughs) Just kidding. Intuition, right? That's where intuition comes into play. Yes. Your intuition told you in that moment that it would be fine to give the money, and then you got it back. So trust your gut. But when in doubt, it's probably a no. Just just saying. So uh, I hope you've enjoyed this scam chat, and you know what to expect possibly if you encounter some of these things. And hopefully you'll have some tools to be able to prevent these things like maps me if you're going to morocco please have an offline map and know where you're going since apparently this is quite common even today so be prepared travel safe